Oh, wrong screen. How about we go to that one? <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Great start to the show. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is... I'm going to have to do these one by one because we still don't have me and Luke pl uh, plumbed in together. But my name is Graham Day. That's at yes. Graham underscore Day on Twitter. And obviously, I'm joined by the man that they call Jeroon. Hello. Mr. Luke Burns. Good morning, Luke. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, we are live, twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Uh, and we are late. We know, 34 minutes late. But we have reasons. I mean, the main reason is we just don't give a f... No, I'm joking. It's Friday. Uh, so naturally, coming towards the weekend, uh, yeah. we got quite a lot of things on. Um, and also that we are down a man. Some say the man, and those people are wrong. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, yes, Mr. Babe isn't feeling well, so we have... Uh, upgraded to the number one redhead on the ice cream team today. We've brought in Mr. Jeroon and let's let's go let's go side cam so we can see it. And his and his glorious facial hair. There is which, facial hair there, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot see on this camera whatsoever. <laughs> our, our listeners will be able to imagine it, and our viewers will be able to imagine it as well. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, Luke. Uh, let's 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 talk a little bit about the facial hair. What? Okay. Why why have we got? I, mean, I think um, I think I think I did mention it. Yeah. Um, when it was even less visible. Coming at um, you from the porcelain. In the first few days of trying to grow a moustache, I basically am doing Movember, um, which seems like less of a thing than it's been in previous Novembers. I don't know whether you think that or not. Have you noticed other people do Movember? Uh, that... Well, I haven't noticed you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're sticking to November. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, okay. No, that's, that's um, yeah, was, uh, I've, the only other person I've seen doing anything with Movember this year is a streamer called Halifax Canadian Guy, and he has, like, like full uh, yeah, beard. Yeah. Um, and he said, rather than starting and then growing it and see where we get to, how about I look stupid throughout all of November? So if I hit my donation target, um, then I will shave it off and I will just have like, like cheesy yeah. tash for, yeah, yeah, for the yeah, entirety yeah. of November. Yeah. And within a couple of hours, he'd hit his target. So he had to go the whole month looking a bit <laughs> doofus. And he looks like... His chat were taking the piss out of him. Uh, check him out, uh, twitch.com forward slash Halifax. It's quite funny. Um, his chat were taking the piss out of him because he looks like Paul Blart, Mole Cop, kind of like. <laughs> he, he puts aviator shades on and he's got this tash on. He just look, he just looks... It, it looks sounds funny. a bit like uh, Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> got to See, the docs looks like... Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Death defined. I mean, it's, it is daft, but it, make, it makes sense. Whereas Hal, it just looks like, like a... Hi! <laughs> like one of those like American neighbours that just offers you pumpkin pie or yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, but it's, it's running with it, so fair play to him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very few people can pull off a moustache. And let's face it, people don't do November to look cool. It is not like in fashion to have a moustache <laughs> at the moment. So <laughs> well, You'd know. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm going to stop taking shots. <laughs> I'm only saying that it's because just... I shaved this morning, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see. I mean, I've given up on, on going baby face because baby face uh, lasts almost a day for me. I'll shave in the morning and people get to say five o'clock shadow. I've got like three o'clock beard. Never yeah. mind five o'clock shadow. Uh, so yeah, I can of... No, no, no. Uh, facial hair. I, I accept that I am a hairy man. I'm a hairy man. Uh, looking at the chat, we've got Pepino, the man with the germs, uh, has just subscribed using a tier one scrub. Uh, scrub? Tier one scrub. <laughs> uh, 15 month streak, 16 wow. months. Uh, coming at good. you from the porcelain. Uh, I, did, I wasn't going to go into the details of why Bibi was off, but <laughs> but now you can probably understand. Yeah. Uh, Connor dropping his uh, tier one sub as well. Eight months in the chat, and before that, uh, I don't know if she's actually watching, but my better half, Danny D83, subscribed with Prime 14 minutes ago as well. She was so committed she did it before we went live. Wow. So, thanks, babe. Uh, his moustache is amazing, TBF. Uh, you're about Halifaxes or Luke's? I, uh, I presume Halifaxes. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Lab Gamer says, hiya. Uh, hiya, good morning. I'm eating raisins. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice one. Dan Lab says, I'm swimming in these points. That's what we want to see. Do you know what that means? That means you're a committed member of the ice cream team. So thank you very much, Dad and Lagim. For, yeah. for those of you that don't know what it is, uh, what he's talking about, if you are watching uh, on Twitch, you can see that Dad and Lad's uh, message is highlighted. If we've, uh, We're part of the uh, Stream Points Partner Program, uh, uh, the testing program, basically. So if you watch the stream, you get given points. You can use points to unlock an emote. So you don't even need to be a sub to emote. Or you can spend them on smaller things like just highlighting a message to make sure your message stands out so the streamers will pick it up in chat. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Definitely Halifax, LMO, LMAO. Sorry, Luke, says Connor. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, yeah. didn't want to say it, but I kind of thought Can't, can't come in on something you can't see. Lazza! <laughs> dropping the host and hashtag playing is believing in the chat. How are you doing, Lazza? You good? You good? You good? How's you good? Uh, how's things? How's things? 
just in time, lads, let's jump straight into things. Since we are running late, let's uh, let's get this show on a road. On, a, on the road. On the road. Not on a, on a road. <laughs> on because a road. On, just on any road. A yeah. nondescript road. We'll, we'll put the show there. But uh, as you can tell, if you were paying attention to uh, Twitter yesterday or any social media, or even your console, if you have an Xbox, you will, it would have been hard to miss that XO19 uh, happened in London uh, yesterday and will be happening for the weekend. I mean, I say it happened yesterday. That was the broadcast, the conference around it. The show will actually be uh, taking place throughout the next couple of days uh, in London. So if you are there and you're dropping by, please, please feel free to let us know. Twitter.com forward slash ice cream uploads. But this article written by Imogen Beckhelling from Eurogamer. She says, Microsoft announces 50 plus titles for Xbox Game Pass. Final Fantasy, The Witcher 3, Minecraft Dungeons, more! <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, I mean, Xbox Game Pass, as you can see there, with all of the product placement, all the adverts on screen. Uh, if you're not watching one of the video services and you are listening on our podcast services, which are SoundCloud, Google Play, uh, Spotify, and iTunes, if you are listening to one of the audio services, we are looking at the article, obviously, on... Uh, uh, Eurogamer's website, and naturally they have Xbox Game Pass wraps around the article, so good good placement for Microsoft. Nice. So she says, Xbox Game Pass really is the gift that keeps on giving. Tonight at XO19, Microsoft has, uh, Microsoft has announced more than 50 new titles headed to the service in the coming months, from a collection of Final Fantasy games and The Witcher 3 to indie gems like My Friend Pedro and Fogs. No idea what either of those are. It looks like there's a little something for everyone on the way, and a bunch of new games have even arrived on Game Pass today. And separately, Phil Spencer has said a cross-platform Final Fantasy XIV is coming. As you might be able to make out from the tiny infographic above, uh, there's an image on screen there which shows uh, all of the uh, titles that are available now and coming. Uh, so, yeah, uh, as you might be able to make out from the tiny infographic above, the new games you can play... Uh, on Game Pass right now include Age of Empires 2 Definitive uh, Edition <laughs> uh, or Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall uh, Hearts of Iron 4 Lego the Ninjago movie video game Rage 2 Remnant from the Ashes The Talos Principle and Tracks the Train Set Game next up we have the titles coming to Game Pass over the winter and throughout the new year I'm not <laughs> I was going to say take a deep breath <laughs> <laughs> L- lots of games uh some things that stand out to me, I mean, the fact that there's a lot of Final Fantasy games from yeah. 7 uh, through to 13s and 15s. Uh, Life is Strange is in there. Streets of Rage 4, Tekken mm. 7. So there's, there's quite a variety of things within there. Yeah. And then last but not least, here are the Xbox Game Studio games hitting pass on the same day they release for all platforms. So Bleeding Edge, Grounded, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Minecraft Dungeons, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Tell Me Why, and Wasteland 3. Bleeding Edge, Ninja Theory's new 4 vs 4 brawler, received a release date today via a leak on the Microsoft Store. And they link that in the article, but don't actually reference it. Interesting. Uh, Xbox Game Pass is... Or, is oh, blah, 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 blah. Words are good. <laughs> yes. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is currently only £1 for three months, as well as the games. With that membership, you can also bag yourself one free month of EA Access, three months of Discord Nitro, and six months of Spotify Premium. That's actually a it's pretty tasty it? deal there. <laughs> for a full list of the games available on Xbox, head over to our handy guide, blah, blah, blah. Link off through there. Thank you very much, Imogen. Uh, but one thing, before I jump in, into all of that, Microsoft Flight Simulator PC, have you seen any of that footage? Uh, no, I'm not, actually. It acts, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so let's, 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 let's bring it back into the studio. Anything on of... I mean, I'll, I'll jump onto uh, Flight Simulator in just a second mm. ago, but anything there, be it the games or be it the, uh, the offer of the one pound for three months, anything there strike you as, as pretty tasty? Yeah, definitely. Um, I... <laughs> First off, just to point out, I actually don't own an Xbox. Um, but there, I know. Gasp! I know, I am a PlayStation guy. But um, I thought, obviously, like, PlayStation is, like, great in my opinion for some of its exclusives. Like, some of the PlayStation exclusives are amazing. But if I was sort of, like, new to the market um, and choosing between one or the other, that would sort of tempt me a little bit more towards Xbox, for sure, those kind of offers on the Game Pass, because I think that service is probably better than any sort of rough equivalent that PlayStation offers. I know PlayStation has something similar. PlayStation Now, I believe yeah. it's called. I believe but, it's called. Um, you don't hear about that as much, and I think it's because it's not as good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Some people might be able to say there's some amazing games on it. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, like, I just remember... Um, 
oh, this is this is a throwback for I, like regular ice cream or long time ice cream watchers. Um, but you know Connor who used to who used to stream with us, um, not not Connor who you've seen more recently. Connor. Con Connor. Yeah, he had um, Game Pass. I remember bringing up all the games that you can have on on screen, and there's just so many. Obviously, like ones that are listed there, I think are just like the newer ones or yeah. the ones that are coming out. But in terms of the library, it just goes on and like on and on. Gears Five on launch day. Gears Four if you missed the one before it. Forza Motorsport on launch day as soon as Game Pass launched but PUBG was out free yeah, whereas yeah. it's 25 quid to buy for anyone else there like so yeah I mean PlayStation now does have um, a good catalogue on there Grand Theft Auto God of War Uncharted 4 Infamous Seco, uh, Second Son Persona mm -hmm. 5 Mordor, uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War uh, Hollow Knight um, they're just like the headlining ones the thing that strikes me though is they are available until the 4th of February 2020 Hollow Knight ongoing access other games available until uh I don't actually. Is it the fourth of February or the second um, of? Oh, good April? point. Uh, you can never tell <laughs> if if there's nothing that's thirteen or above in the numbers. You just can't tell. <laughs> the reason I'm saying this is, as you can see on screen there. Uh, oh no, that's us. <laughs> that's on screen there. Um, obviously, we don't know if that's UK or US date yeah. for, uh, date format. It's four slash two slash twenty twenty four slash two twenty twenty and then two slash one twenty twenty. The fact that those games expire, I find a bit. Uh, hmm. uh, interesting because obviously on on game pass i don't think that happens i think you no, get I the game and it so. stays there yeah, unless cool. that could change going over time maybe games pass uh, gives you uh, uh they've bought an exclusive for 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 at the moment it, it's open-ended but mm. then maybe they could end i don't know um but so your playstation now definitely is uh, improving its offer and i think that is largely down to how successful microsoft game pass has been i mean the thing with uh playstation now is it I believe, and I could be, I could be quoting a slightly misleading fact here, but I believe that is more successful in terms of it has more users, it has a larger install, uh, install base, but I believe also that is purely because there are more PlayStation users. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, well... Interesting to see the proportions or percentage. Yeah, yeah I, I imagine the percentage goes in Xbox's favour because Xbox Game Pass is definitely the better... Um, of the two offerings mm. the amount of games the amount of like i mean all of those games are wonderful god of war uncharted 4 infamous second son grand theft auto 5 amazing games i've played all of them to a degree god of war is the one that i haven't played much of i've completed all the rest of them infamous second son came out seven years ago at the start mm. of at the launch of playstation 4 or thereabouts uncharted 4 definitely a few years ago um uh, and grand theft auto 5 seven years ago was the last gen so those and massive titles god of war a full year ago uh so what is coming out now that is in there and that's that's the thing is there's there's nothing that's boom right at this moment yeah. that's that's in there there's no popping things and yeah. that's the issue i mean microsoft and their stance on it is game pass is bringing you the forces is bringing you the gears that came out last week is bringing you boom boom yeah, boom, exactly, boom yeah, new yeah. titles and so a pound at the moment <laughs> which is incredible i mean that that uh i uh thought was going to be kind of your hot take because obviously yeah. you did tweet i no, saw your is. tweet from yeah. last night uh saying well, uh that gone yeah oh. i was just going to say that's the other angle of this as well and i suppose something that uh, microsoft are always going to have in their favor um is that obviously they effectively own the pc space as well and um so you've got um xbox game pass but then there is a sort of lesser in beta sort of service called um xbox pass for pc um and you don't you know i think you need to have an xbox account but you don't need as far as i can tell you don't need to have like an xbox live gold membership or anything like that um you can just buy the pc bundle um which i looked at briefly yesterday yes it is a pound because of this offer but i think even normally it's about 3.99 a month at the moment which is pretty good because you get like a lot of new games like that list was mentioning age of M the new age of empires is definitive edition and that's like literally mark was just talking to me about that a couple of days ago uh, <laughs> upstairs so um yeah, Age of Empires 2, different. Uh, yeah. Um, and I could buy that for 15 quid on Steam, or I could literally pay it a quid, or even like a few quid over a few months, probably get everything I want out of that, and then like so much more from all the other games as well. It just seems like good value. Yes, absolutely. Um, very good to see you both, uh, says Lazar. Will PS5 and Xbox 2 be cross platform? Nothing confirmed yet, uh, but I'd highly expect it. Uh, cross platform, yeah is pretty much industry standard now. Now it's there, there is no reason to take it away. If you take that away, if either Microsoft or, or PS go, do you know what, we're taking this away now, mm. then they will be 
the dickheads. Yeah. They, they will be the bad guys that, yeah. that will not come out smelling roses. So it's here to stay, I'd, I'd assume. Uh, redeemed by one pound sub, not used it though yet. Uh, addicted to cod. Uh, too addicted to cod. Are you still enjoying it? As, as the patch, I mean, the update to kind of like fix Piccadilly, has that changed anything for the better? Obviously, it will change it for the better, but is it noticeable? Uh, now is the time to get an Xbox S or whatever the cheapest at the time. Next 12 months of Game Pass leading up to Scarlet will be fantastic for Microsoft. I think that's the case as well, you know. I think they will use uh, the Xbox, the end of this gen, as a loss leader to promote not only Game Pass, but also their next gen. Yeah. If they give you all of the games that you've just not bothered with, mm -hmm. um, but free now, uh, well, I say free, for the cost of a subscription, you're bought into it and you are you will continue that throughout the next seven years mm -hmm. of the next generation. But, I mean, there's a lot of people that didn't play... Um, that didn't play any of the Xbox games because they just didn't have one. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people do have Xboxes, but a lot more people didn't, and a lot more people went for Playstations, and these guys are jumping in now. Xbox can go, oh... Here's all the games that you didn't play. Bam, yeah, bam, yeah, bam, yeah. bam. Whereas True. everyone with the PlayStation that's played all their, all PlayStation games, here's the games that you've played before, before but now yeah. you can play again for free. It's like, yeah. oh, great. I only literally sat there, but thanks, mate. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think, as Bibi says, uh, definitely a good time to jump into uh, Xbox and Game Pass at this, at this point in time. Uh, uh, yeah, games released on... Uh, Games Pass at launch is sexy. Gears 5 and the Outworlds, to mention a few. Yeah, exactly. Uh, best part about Xbox Games Pass is that the games are available on PC, not just console. Yeah, Luke's just touched on that. Uh, I'm sure PlayStation Now, you don't install the game directly to the console uh, where you do with Game Pass. Oh, interesting. PS, PS Now is cloud-based. Yeah, and the quality uh, is, isn't yeah. as good. I mean, the thing with uh, Xbox Game Pass, I mean, touching on the PC side of things, I mean, I, I have literally a Microsoft console right there. It's not, <laughs> it's my, my laptop, but it's, it's a Microsoft Surfi uh, Surface. And I keep seeing the Game Pass sort of stuff uh, floating around, and I keep going, mm. bugger off, Microsoft mm, Store. Yeah, yeah. I've pretty much deleted the Microsoft Store. I haven't. I've just got rid of any mention of it because this is my workspace. Yeah, yeah. But if they start pushing through uh, some cool games, obviously I'm not going to be able to play the likes of Gears on this. Yeah. But if I could play some of the uh, less intensive games, then that, you know, it's quite, yeah, it is quite exactly, nice. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. You know, you can sign up to your... I know you've got a good gaming PC at home, you know, you can you can play Gears 5 on that just through Windows. Jobs are good. Hmm. PS Now allows you to instantly play any game uh, by streaming them so you get 480p quality. However, if you download the game, it's just like playing any other game. You get the best out of it. Uh, interesting. Uh, which city do you pr predict next-gen GTA will be based on, says J-Dubs. Morning, J-Dubs. Uh, uh, I, I think, and this is purely because it was based on a leak, which is probably a false leak, uh, I think Miami. Let's uh, our Florida in that sort of wider sense because uh, I would absolutely love to see Vice City back in the action and Vice City was based on uh, yeah. Miami so that's what I'm going to go for uh, purely because that's the only thing I've seen I mean that could be some nobby that's just made some bullshit story about location spotting happening in uh, in and around Florida uh, so yeah it, it would be nice to see it based on Miami Florida but yeah, yeah. we'll yeah, see we'll see yeah be interesting to see though uh, I'm not sure um, myself. I've not seen too much about it. Um, I could only really comment on what I would like to see more than what fits with what has been seen. So this is comp probably completely off the mark. But it'd be cool if they did something like Tokyo or something like that, or somewhere a bit different, rather than like rather than America. America which I know, like, like I think the images that we've seen or have been leaked look very obviously American. But um, yeah, it'd be cool if they did something a bit different. Uh, they've kind of done uh, they've done Paris and London now haven't they so see if I can find oh no I'm thinking of Assassin's Creed <laughs> see if I can find yeah see if you can find there the uh, leak it was it was a tweet that I but I thought it was a tweet that Ice Cream did but uh, let's go oh no that one that one um, there we go so this was the rumour that happened uh, mid-October so just over a month ago GTA 6 is rumoured to be coming to the PS5 at launch it was previously leaked uh, in air quotes, that it could uh, land holiday 2020, which now coincides with a confirmed PS5 release. Uh, so that was a previous leak that, that is yeah. coming at the same sort of time window. So people are like, ooh, interesting. GTA launch, that'd be nice. But the best bit, if this second pick is real, is location scouting suggests it'll be set in South Florida, a.k.a. Vice City. So 
There we go. Potential artwork, maybe, on screen, uh, showing the uh, sand and artwork style that we've seen from uh, Vice City-esque images. But there, this is a, a, an image that was floating around. Apparently, Take-Two Interactive, which obviously is the um, uh, company that owns Rockstar, which creates GTA, were doing some location scouting in and around uh, the Sunshine State. Uh, but... Once again, no credit, uh, no real credible source for that other than, oh, look, this is something that, that, that looks legit because it says uh, <laughs> the only thing that makes it legit is someone that says it's legit. So, yeah, so yeah would be really nice to see uh, a return to uh, Vice City because if you get a return to Vice City, you get a return to Vice City's soundtrack and that genre. Mm. And, oh, my God. GTA Vice City, I don't care who you are, where you come from, what you say, unless you say Vice City is the best soundtrack to a game of all time, then you are wrong. If you don't say that, then you are wrong. You are wrong. Uh, so, yeah, that's my thoughts. What about you, J-Dubs? What do you think? Uh, Piccadilly is now playable. Uh, before, you just got uh, Spawn Camp. Not so much now. Nice. San Francisco. Interesting. Vice City, please, says Bibi. Uh, I'd love a variety of locations. San Andreas, Liberty City. Uh, maybe a new location uh, that are accessible uh, by plane. Or a new Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what was San Andreas? Uh, so you got uh, Liberty City was New York, uh, Vice City was Miami. What was San Andreas? Because uh, I know San Andreas had a bit more like city and 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 the uh, like the outback yeah. sort of thing. But what does anyone know what San Andreas was based on? Uh, which, which GTA was that in? Uh, GTA San Andreas. Uh, oh right, okay. It was kind of <laughs> that makes sense. It's kind of in the name. <laughs> <laughs> LA. Uh, ah, okay. That was LA. Uh, Grand Theft uh, An Anglesey, Grand Theft Auto, Somerset Retreat, Grand Theft Aberdeen, <laughs> the Scottish Invasion. We'll take the Grand Theft Aberdeen. <laughs> yes, oh, please. Yes. Uh, That'd be amazing. So where where was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas based? I mean, which game was that? Well, well, I don't uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Luke. Sorry, Luke. Right. I, uh, I was looking for a number, but I guess it wasn't numbered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, jumping back to our piece of content, XO19 last night, 50 plus titles announced for Game Pass, which is pretty tasty. Uh, and as we continue with the Microsoft news, I mean, Fair warning, this is pretty much going to be a Microsoft-focused show for the start of it, at least, <laughs> because it was the biggest news from yesterday. So, exactly. so naturally, as we jump into our next piece of content, uh, you can see, once again, sticking with Eurogamer, this time Tom Phillips says, Days away from Google Stadia's launch, Microsoft beefs up the X Cloud offering. It'll be multiple years before you, this, uh, before you see this technology perfected, is a quote in the tagline. So Tom Phillips says, Microsoft streaming service Project X Cloud will come to Windows 10 PCs in 2020, as well as other devices. When it does, X Cloud will also support Bluetooth controllers, including PlayStation's own DualShock 4. And on Xbox, it'll simply become a part of Xbox Game Pass. Nice. So there we go, another reason to get Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. These announcements come from XO19 today, where Xbox boss Phil Spencer told attending press that it would be multiple years before game streaming technology was perfected, which sounds a lot like a Google Stadia <laughs> then. <laughs> uh, but the only way it would be, he continued, was for companies such as Microsoft with experience in games to begin testing how uh, best to roll out streaming services to customers. That, see, that sounds another burn as well. Mm. The only way it will be a success is that companies uh, that have experience in games. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, it's been a month since xCloud's preview program began in Korea, the US, and here in the UK. 2020 will see it roll out to more countries, including Canada, India, Japan, and elsewhere in Europe. For those involved in the scheme, more than 50 extra games are on the way from indie hits such as Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, Graham Spitting on the Desk, a Yoko, uh, and Yoko's Island Express to AAA fare like Devil May Cry 5, Hitman, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Borderlands The Handsome Collection. They've got a, name, a game named after you, Luke. Wow. Yeah. Microsoft. See the touch. <laughs> Did they? Uh, no. <laughs> he gives you one hand and he takes with the other bag out. Uh, Microsoft is also adding more of its own first party catalog, including Crackdown 3, Forza Horizon 4, and Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Halo Wars 2, Hellblade Senwa Sacri uh, Sacrifice, Killer Instinct, Ori in the Blind Forest, and Recore are also on the list. Uh, so, I mean, poor Google Stadia. You kind of think. RIP. <laughs> yeah, it's. Hey guys, guess what we're launching with? Not a lot of things! <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Microsoft are just going, yeah, okay, we've got our our offering, uh, which is consoles, which is the Games Pass, and, and do you know what? Uh, 
the xCloud stuff is is a project yeah. on the side yeah. that will be. We'll just throw that in, you know, as a as a side portion of chips in the main course sort of thing, you know. Exactly, and that that though is the key thing is. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to have everything, and it's not going to be fully perfect for a while. But in the meantime, we have all of this cool, wonderful, big, amazing, sexy, lovely stuff with all of the things that's on the edge of it. Whereas uh, Stadia is this is our main project, and it has none of the cool, sexy, lovely things on the side of it. And it's just like that yeah. for me is the difference in the messaging. Microsoft can give Stadia a quick slap around the head and go, now you, you youngins, you noisy little kids, you upstarts trying to disrespect us in our space, all we can say is, we're not even taking this properly seriously yet. Not Well, we are, but you shouldn't because it's not ready. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Which is just like, fuck you. <laughs> uh, which, absolutely. Yes. And the, the, listening to the kind of funny games daily, the way that they say it is that they should have gone with the early access route. Fortnite's, PUBG's, uh, H1Z1s, mm -hmm. Daisies, whatever, all of these games and then all systems like that are, are kind of going early access. So there's a reason why it's all shit, but you can still spend on the Founders Edition because it is it is a Founders yeah. Edition. You are here at the beginning and that, that element, they've missed a trick by just yeah. going, no, we know things because we are Google. Exactly. And then yeah. balls in it up completely and... and I mean, I mean, you may have you may have pre-ordered the game six months before it even uh, comes out, but you're not playing it. No. no, not unless you want to play it on your mobile phone. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's it really is cringy. Uh, we've talked obviously before, haven't we, as well about um, just the internet speed not being there to to use this service potentially, even if everything else around it was perfect. Um, and I think Xbox are acknowledging that more you know look we're not in a space yet where this can be this can be sort of just put out there and works perfectly straight away um i don't know have, have you um do you know anyone who sort of pre-ordered the stadia uh mark mr bamba uh, who has literally just messaged me something uh I, yeah i think lee um has as well um Wait, who these people are basically in our office, by the way. <laughs> For those who don't know, I also know someone that was going to, but now hasn't, which is Connor. Uh, uh -huh, as yes. a result of seeing all the shite that that was, I mean, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm being harsh to Google Stadia. My tone it sounds like someone that's that's almost like an Xbox fanboy and is against Google Stadia. I'm I'm disappointed. It comes yeah. from a, from an area of disappointment. I really like the idea of Google Stadia. The, the founders edition would be like 120 quid or whatever was such a good price to get in on the ground floor of the next generation of uh not not consoles but but yes, a system uh, yeah a ser yeah service so, so. service better word definitely go with your word service so i'm disappointed that they promised so much to come out swinging for the fences and then barely hit like first base kind of thing yeah. you're just like i mean i know that you don't hit aim for the bases but shit analogy but come to aim for the fences and fucking barely touch the ball yeah. is is poor for me and that's why I'm, I'm disappointed because they they've come in marketing at gamers from my perspective not fully understanding gamers by going you will you will like the things buy it <laughs> and gamers going oh we like the things we yeah. will buy it but people uh, instantly picking it apart picking it apart we've talked uh, talked about ips uh, and data caps and connection speeds and is is the infrastructure there and all of that stuff uh, the fact that they've they've come out swinging and they're launching with 12 games 25% of which is tomb raider yeah. uh, <laughs> and then then microsoft i've got this little project on the side that's only available in three territories and yet they already have more games available mm. on their service that's not fully launched mm. is the difference and baby says xcloud better than Stadia absolutely uh, and, and yeah. that's what it is I mean I really hope Google can push it forward because uh, that streaming tech is is the future for gaming I've said it many times on, on the scoop but Stadia in its current guise and with its current messaging isn't the one to take it there it's interesting when you think about how massive a company Google is and how often they have failed at these little side projects it's like I know this is a bit of a tangent but do you know like was it Google Plus and the Google Circle sort of mechanism stuff with social media as well? That just completely flopped on its face. Yeah, we'll, we'll take Facebook down. Google Plus. Uh, bam! Make your own Google Plus space. Oh, sweet. So I can have my own social profile that ties into my YouTube and everything. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay. And how do I get people to, to my page? Can I have like Google dot plus forward slash Graham? No. <laughs> uh, can I edit it at all? 
maybe <laughs> in the future, which is exactly what's happening. Yeah. With that. So it's like you literally are asking me to share my plus link, which is like plus dot Google dot whatever forward slash nine eight seven two one 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 two four five 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 three. No, no, that's crap. Social media is basic. Yeah. You as Google who own the internet should fucking know this pretty exactly, much. Yeah. And and it's it's that. We do social. <laughs> do you though? Yeah, we do really. games. Mm. Do you though? I mean, I'd love for you to do. I mean, I am I am massively open to Google in terms of I have been to Google's offices from in a business setting, and the way they look after their staff. I mean, arguably, it's 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 kind of creepy overlordish. Yeah. But the way they do look after their staff, whether it's creepy or, or overlordish or not, a lot of companies are creepy overlords and don't look after. Yeah. Uh, but like, I went to a Google conference and got in this conference, and it was kind of like, oh, you're a bit early. Go get go get some breakfast. Oh, nice. Go into the canteen. Massive canteen. Imagine when you're on holiday in an all-inclusive resort and you've got everything to choose from. That's oh, Google's amazing. canteen, and you don't pay for any of it. It's all free. They understand so that. Cool. I mean. Luke just I'm, 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 Luke, Luke likes a freebie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the fact that they know that keeping your staff um, fed, watered, and happy is is good. And the, but then it's when they say it starts to come down to overlordish is they en- try to enforce everything about it. If you get their first thing and there's nobody there, you can eat fine. Yeah. Uh, but when you go in lunch times and things like that, and the whole building's full of people, they establish queues of about three to four minutes. Uh, and that's because if you get your food and you sit down, you don't make friendships. If you sat, stood there in the queue for too long, it's not productive. If you stand there for three to four minutes, that they've found that's the opportune time for you to start conversations with people in lines, uh, to start to develop workplace friendships. And if you have friends at work, you enjoy your work. And if you sure, enjoy your work, sure. you're a better worker. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I'm thinking, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm not going to speak to anyone in this line. Just screw you. Get it in my mind. But, but it's... Whilst it's good, for, it's profitable for the business. It's also good for the worker because if you happy happy life, uh, happy work life, happy work kind yeah, of thing, it's that balance. Exactly, yeah. So it, whilst it kind of is a little bit psychological invasiveness, uh, I'm I'm all for that kind of stuff because Precisely. I've worked in places where I've stood in lines for three to four minutes and spoke to people and, and I'm just thinking, mate. <laughs> uh, and I've worked in places where I'm not queued and I'm thinking, oh fucking nobody talks to anyone in this place. And I've worked in this place which I just don't want to speak to anyone anyway. God, God. Uh, oh God. So we're, we're only speaking to each other because we have to. Do the cameras on this. <laughs> yeah, on the camera. I five. Yeah. <laughs> we have jokes about beards, but off the cameras. Fuck you and your mustache. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this kind of comes back to the comment I made a few months back. Xbox should have brought out their own Chromecast slash Fire Stick with Xbox Game Pass preloaded on it, so that you can play, uh, so you can log in, pay your subscription, and play wherever you want uh, with a much better service. This is exactly what I'd, I would like to try, as I have more faith in Microsoft than Google in the gaming industry. See, I think that's a very good uh, comment. The, the, the reason I want Google to succeed is because very, very few companies, maybe Amazon now, obviously, uh, will have the. Uh, not only the financial might, obviously Microsoft does, but having their services in terms of just providing the web services, mm-hmm. not the gaming services, that infrastructure they have there surely must be bigger mm-hmm. than Microsoft. It's not that Microsoft isn't big enough, yeah. but I'm thinking if you get them on board and doing it, then then the whole service just will work. Mm-hmm. It has to work. The learnings and things that people can learn from them learning just has to be huge. Yeah, but if they're just going to fuck it up so badly, then let's just <laughs> let have Microsoft doing it. Uh, I think if Stadia had a selection of first-party exclusives, it might have been interesting, but why do you want to play games that have been out two plus years on the go? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my comment then, 25% of the offering. So next week, by buying early, and when we say early, we mean more than five months ago, because five months yeah. doesn't get at you then. Six months, six maybe. Months. Uh, eight months, possibly. Uh, but if you bought it eight months ago, when Tomb Raider was already out and was a bit fresher then, if you bought it eight months ago, then you just about qualified to be able to play it on another format now that might, might work. It is ridiculous. When you put it like that, it's kind of ridiculous. So yes, Project X Cloud uh, being days away uh, from the Google Stadia launch. Uh, uh, no, no, being, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, being days away days away from the Google Stadia launch and Project X Cloud being a much better service I'm, yeah. I'm happy to see and hopefully uh, that gives Microsoft a little bit of a slap not Microsoft Google a little bit of a slap to say look you guys have fucked up and you've seen you've not even got achievements on your console Microsoft uh, has had achievements 
maybe not the first Xbox, but at least from the 360, yeah. you've had achievements from then. So that's, you've had seven years of the Xbox One and seven years of the 360, 15 years worth of stuff. You've, like channels like Achievement Hunter or whatever that have been on YouTube. If you own YouTube, you should see from your own gaming space that Achievement exactly. Hunter is, is a massive channel. Deal. What? <laughs> what? Anyway, anyway, sorry. Let's let's so let's stop with the venting. Let's stop with the venting. Uh, let's leave Google alone. We're talking about Microsoft, and uh, do you know what? Let's stick with it. Let's let's move forward. With more Microsoft-focused content, and as you can see here, at one with the product placement, uh, Microsoft there getting their Xbox Game Pass this time on Gamespot. Mm -hmm. And this is an article written by James O'Connor. It says Star Wars. Well, let's move us out the way. Get down there so we can read. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order review roundup. What do the critics think? The reason I mentioned like sticking with Microsoft is because did you see the uh, the cool trailer that they showed um, last night? I've not seen it yet. You know, uh, it was it, I say ad, a trailer advert, should I say, for the game, and it was quite a nice uh, real world um, video, and it was the to summarize it badly. It was a girl going to see a dad at work, and a dad owns a construction site or something like that. Um, so the girl gets there and and puts a hood up Jedi-ish skish and sure. the, all the workers clearly know her as, oh, it's the boss's kid, so they all like, pew, 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 <laughs> and then like get into a role-play Star Wars-ish. But then it starts doing that sort of like imagination becomes reality. So so one minute they're going, pew, pew, the next minute they're going, doo, 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 uh, firing actual right. guns and stuff. And it, it was quite a nice, cool video. Um, yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, sounds a bit more arty, if you like. A bit yeah, more, yeah. It, was, it was kind of more like the PlayStation for the players sort of thing where you got the uh, X-Wing uh, descending outside yeah, the window yeah. for Star Wars Battlefront. That sort of in the real world. It was quite, it was quite a good uh, thing. Anyway, moving away from Exxon, just on Star Wars, is the Force strong with this one? James O'Connor at GameSpot says, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is just the third Star Wars title of this console generation. Uh, it follows the first and second Battlefront games for PS4 and Xbox One and PC. The same systems that Fall, uh, Fallen Order is available on. The game, made by Titanfall and Apex Legends developer Respawn Entertainment, puts you in the force-sensitive boots of Jedi warrior Cal Kestis and sets you out into a post-Revenge of the Sith version of the Star Wars universe. Reviews have gone up alongside the, uh, the release of the game, including our own 8 out of 10 take. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, the latest game in the canon, is one of the better offerings, specifically because it tries to look beyond the trappings of Star Wars, our critic Phil Honcho says. It's not just another Jedi power fantasy, although... Why is that? Wow, that advert is... At IBM, problems actually inspire us. It's not just another Jedi power fantasy, although wielding the Force with skill and resolve will certainly make you feel powerful. Like the best Star Wars game, it's one that adds to the ideas of the film and other material, exploring new corners of the galaxy while focusing on the core themes of the franchise. Knowing Star Wars yourself, Jedi Fallen Order darkness, is one of the rare Star Wars games that feels right at home in the franchise's greater story. story and a half, it's a more yeah, grounded take on words. being a Jedi, <laughs> and its well-rounded characters help most tell a compelling so far, story that makes it feel true to the Star Wars universe. Forms. I don't know if you guys can hear that. My uh, Xbox. Not my... Is that, is that coming okay, through the stream? Shut that thing uh, off and I can't grab tell some seats. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, the speaking. Uh, if that was coming through, I apologize. Um, there we go. Other reviews are mostly positive, with most outlets praising the return to form for the Star Wars, which hasn't received a substantial single player game in some time. There's also some consensus, though, that the game can feel a bit rough or become frustrating in subsections. We've rounded up a few Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order reviews. Uh, for more, be sure to check out GameSpot's sister site, Metacritic, for a look at even more, even what, even more of what critics made of the game. So, X, uh, GameSpot, eight out of ten. IGN, nine out of ten. Game Informer, eight point seven five mm -hmm. out of ten. Games Radar, four out of five. US Gamer, three point five out of five. Eurogamer, no score. Um, uh, uh, let's read the Eurogamer one to give a bit more on that. I'll admit, crunching a souls like it. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, crunching a soul's like in less than four days is an unnatural and grueling experience. I imagine if I'd played Fallen Order over several months, I would have been less frustrated, but probably still bored. It's such a shame as Fallen Order has a, an incredible gameplay experience at its core, uh, with fantastic environments and well-directed action sequence, yet it's unable to sustain this thanks to some fundamental design problems, says mm -hmm. Emma Kent. Uh, so, sounds like Eurogamer are not particularly happy with it, although the, yeah. the other scores are seen in pretty nice, particularly yeah. IGN giving it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I think uh, I looked on Metacritic and I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was in that article or not already, but um, it's about 84 or something like that, I think it was up. Uh, which is kind of where I would expect. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I noticed uh, in the comments we've <laughs> apologies for the sound for that video. Yeah, the, the issue we have today is because um, 
baby's pooing himself. Uh, we are a device down in the office, yeah. so we don't have... Usually we have, like, uh, another laptop so we can see two versions of the chat at once, but at the moment, obviously, chat is on my laptop. But if I uh, bring up the chat on my laptop, you can't see the article. So Luke's kind of uh, checking it out on his phone. So apologies for giving you the uh, the advert. Stop the noise, turn off the video! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's copyright taking late. this video. We can hear you, boys. Uh, well, Sorry, there we go. Well, we killed it. Better late than never. Um, so yeah, 84 is kind of what I'd expect because a game like that, I always feel that unless it pushes the envelope and gives you something like unexpected, mm. uh, then I, I feel it, we get back to the the snobbery of reviewing. Yeah. Reviewing is always a case of it needs to go bigger and better. Mm. It needs to be more powerful and emotive. It needs to uh, strike a chord that's... But the thing with something like that is you're, you're already tied to a universe that, yeah, yeah. that people have been through and experienced and they've had nine movies pretty much yeah. plus animated versions plus other games so there's a kind of a law that they have to adhere to and there's there's rules that can't be broken it's particularly with the release of a new game so if they go fucking absolutely like wild with this then people were like oh, yeah, this is awesome. amazing and then the film's not like that and it's like all oh, right so so i, I feel to for, for it to get an 8.5 i think that's kind of where it should have been hitting if it gets yeah. past a nine you're kind of like well yeah, this this is then has to be presumably based on how we usually see reviews going. Uh, yeah, it has to, like you say, it has to be offering something amazing, different, or whatever. Um, yeah, and this hasn't tried to be anything different from what I can tell from the trailers and stuff. Really, it's still a game where you are a Jedi, like even within the realms of the Star Wars universe. You know, it's not like trying to be. Um, it's it's the same well-trodden ground if you know what i mean there are plenty of games where you you are still a jedi and it's story based or whatever it looks like this is a bit more story based in some um i don't have did you play the force unleashed because i actually never played that i did yeah was that quite story based yeah it was um you were uh star killer um right. and it, it was about your journey uh through the path of the yeah. force so you started out as uh essentially a, a Padawan kind of thing, sure. and then the game was built around you mastering more and learning more strengths, unlocking more in the skill tree to mm. be to be able to essentially be Vader level of skill kind of thing. Cool. Um, uh, so it was good. I mean, it wasn't the best reviewed. I think that was kind of like around the six mark, unless that was mm, Boston least two, which I didn't play two. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it much like I'll enjoy this. I like the Star Wars universe. I like the idea of being able to go through. Um, and use all of the things that I've seen in the films for a million years. That enough for me. If if I get a good uh, feeling of using the force moves, and it's not just kind of like a, Oof. yeah, because yeah. the force <laughs> Jedi's are, are big, not big, but like their their aura is big. People yeah. are aware of how powerful yeah. and how amazing the Jedi are. And if it's just a case of you've got a shiny stick and you go <laughs> yeah exactly and then it's like oh great right you can you can juggle from distance yeah, <laughs> yeah wonderful yeah. great I, I know what you mean there's there's like a really tiny point i remember mentioning to um to jack who i sat next to in the office and we were watching the trailer um and this was just from a small part of one of the clips or whatever but you know like how jedi can deflect you know lasers with a lightsaber and stuff um i feel like it was the animation was like too over the top it was like He's spinning his lightsaber this way and that way, like constantly, like his arms are moving like fifty thing, like you know, frames per second sort of thing. It felt like, but I actually don't think that's cool. I think it's cooler when there's a little bit of um, effortlessness about it. It's as power. Well. So there's a power. Yeah, the powers have to be powerful. I agree. Like the powers have to be powerful, but I, I feel like the the actual like Jedi have to kind of this elegance at the same time. So it's about kind of getting that balance. I think. Yeah, I think that's probably. I always assume. When there's something like that, it's probably a, a development angle. Of, you've got a problem there, and the problem is in the film, the laser blasts are scripted, so they know that they have to go, pow, there's a pow. Yeah. Whereas in a game, and you've got five people shooting at you, if you just hold block uh, and you're going, ha, pow, but then there's another shot <laughs> yeah, just about to be there, in. and he yeah, goes, yeah. pow, straight back true, at you. So true. I always feel when you've got like a... <laughs> it's like a shield, yeah. all-in-one kind yeah, of solution. Yeah. But like you say, I mean, that does kind of spoil the... Uh, 
the the idea of uh, the force is it, it, it almost allows you to see. I mean, that that pod racing like ch- talk with Anakin Skywalker, you can see things before it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that 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 instinct of knowing it's coming, and that that kind of one 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 one. It's like I know it's all coming, so I don't even <laughs> care. But uh, yeah, you can't really replicate that in a video game too easily, can you? Because if you knew what was coming already, when we went through a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the ending. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, I mean, where? Where would you say you are probably? I mean, are you are you kind of is expecting the eight nines and fours and uh, um, stuff? Scores? Yeah, I, I was I was a bit like you were saying with the Metacritic being pretty much what you expected. Yeah, I was I was thinking in the eighties, um, and it's it's a weird one because I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan, and there's a game that's come out that looks good and it's got good reviews, but I'm. St- Still going to just wait a little while longer. It's only because, really, at the moment, I've got so many other games I want to play. Like, there's, I've just got loads of stuff at the moment. Yeah, I was sat watching. I watched some of XO19 last night. Uh, not much, um, but then afterwards, I quickly scrolled through Xbox UK's Twitter feed. So, because obviously, as something's happening, they're live tweeting. Oh, here's yeah. the new thing, so you can get a gist of what happened yeah. uh, afterwards. And I saw the Star Wars advert and I watched it and I thought it's a pretty cool advert. It's a nice emotive one. And there was like a scene that kind of hit with me because this his daughter is I don't know somewhere around twelve to fifteen ish, yeah. just just outside of Chloe's age range, but close enough yeah. to feel. Oh, it's kind of relevant. And he's looking at like a picture of his family. And at, like at first you can see him. He's like, oh, she's there, and I've got work shit to do. It's almost like that metaphor of let's put work down and play with the family. Yeah. So that that was the kind of. And I'm thinking, oh, that's quite nice. It kind of rings true a little bit with me in terms of like I'm I'm at the point where I, I can play games with yeah. with Chloe, and it's quite cool. So, but then I, but then I, when it started showing the gameplay, I thought, you know, what? this actually looks pretty sick. I know this is on an advert, so it's meant to. But I yeah. thought, do you know what? I have a fuck ton of games. I literally have a game that came out last Friday, Death Stranding, uh, sat there going, play me, play me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, should I just buy Star yeah. Wars and play that this weekend? Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's like this constant battle as a, you know, as a gamer. It's like, it constantly happens, doesn't it? There's always like, you, you buy something that looks good and then it's like buying a, a, a book that just looks nice on your shelf, but you know, you're know you never actually going to read. Yeah, or, or it looks nice in a digital library that you can't look at unless you actually go looking for it. Yeah, um, and you just end up building this collection, and it's it's weird. Um, it's not a thousand a day. <laughs> well, that, the fact that it's, it's getting 8.5-ish uh, is fine by me, because that tells me exactly ex- what I wanted. Like I say, yeah. you can't take a structured IP that you don't own and kind of reinvent it into be a, a, a canon IP. Um, you can't really do much more than that, particularly when you've you've got a film coming out a month after, which wraps up the franchise. Yes. You can't True. do anything different. You yeah. can't upset the Apple car. I mean, it, we saw it with Battlefront uh, 2, uh, that coming out with all the loot box fiasco. Disney were on the calls pretty much going, you get rid of everything mm. because if you fuck up this film, this film will make more money than that game will ever make. So, so stop it or we'll stop yeah. you. So yeah. I think there's not much that they can do with that. I mean, look at Uncharted, a huge first person, uh, uh, for single player story mode game. Obviously, a lot of parallels there with a Star Warsy kind of game. Um, but Naughty Dog, this is our character. Mm. This is our story. This is our universe. We can do what we want with this. So it's, it, they do. They, they nail it with their controls. Arguably, they develop it for longer. Um, they nail it with uh, the story and the emotion and the characters and stuff. But they can develop those how they want. So I think it's it's free. So for that to get eight point five, I'm perfectly happy with that. Yep. And it still remains a game that that will be on my list. If what about you guys? Yes. Will you uh, be buying Star Wars? It's out today. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Um, uh, if you buy it, please let EA know that we sent you. I mean, they, they have absolutely <laughs> yeah, no so ties to us whatsoever. But just let us know, because that way they might send us some more stuff in the future and we could... Exactly. Don't worry like that. But, but, you know, just imagine someone toddling into, like, the local was game station now, like like Blackpool Games yeah, or whatever, yeah. going, yeah, ice cream That's sent good. me. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> what kind of what discount are you going to give me? Or <laughs> Star Wars characters mixed with musical instruments. Go! <laughs> Flute Skywalker. <laughs> Oboe One Kenobi. Boba Fret. Christ, that's... Nope. Okay, I'll have to come back to that one because I need time to work on my puns, uh, especially when you've rattle droids. Oh. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> You'd just be like us for the next half an hour, silent kind of go. Mm. Uh, Yodel. <laughs> Yodel. That's not an instrument. Get out of here. <laughs> you'd, you'd have had to say like throat kind of thing. Uh, anyway, I, I'm gonna. I, I will sit there and like get caught up in the need to create a good pun. So I'm gonna ignore that and jump ahead. And you know what? Just for a change, let's talk about some Xbox-related content. Ooh. Let's mix things up. We've not, we've not done that so far. And today, uh, jumping into uh, Rich Stanton's article on Kotaku UK, Halo Reach joins the Master, Le uh, Master Leaf, uh, Master Chief uh, collection on Graham's birthday. Uh, no, December third. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that is my birthday. Wow. wow. I don't know if it's been mentioned that my birthday is December third. Graham's <laughs> birthday is December the third. The third of December. <laughs> you know, like the PUBG mentions that you normally put in will start to be replaced. Ding, 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 ding. By, uh, this. Yeah, we'll have to, like, we'll, rather than getting a ding, 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 we need, like, a, a Stevie Wonder, like, Happy birthday <laughs> yeah. to ya! Uh, anyway, Bungie's final Halo game was both farewell and prequel to a series the studio had made great. Halo Reach also gave some indication of what was to come, building its, brackets, excellent campaign around a squad of Spartans and four-player co-op. The less said about jetpacks in multiplayer, the better, but Reach got so much right. Interesting, because I don't know much about Halo at all. I've not played any Halo game. Doesn't really look close to me. I played multiplayer in the first one and just saw, like, double jumping, fluorescent green grass and lasers, and I was like, no, it's not for me. Uh, and then I saw Keen Stars tweet yesterday uh, in my timeline, or this morning, basically saying, fuck Halo Reach, it ruined uh, the series for me. 1 to 3 was good. Halo Reach is what sent me and loads of other people over to Call of Duty. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't realise that. Anyway, yeah. clearly that's not a universal thought because Rich Stanton said uh, Halo Reach was excellent. So anyway, tonight at XO19, Brian Jarrod, uh, shout out to Bibby who couldn't pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> Gerard, Gerard, uh, tonight at XO19, Brian Jarrod of 343 Industries, the current custodians of the franchise, announced that Reach is joining its extended family in Halo, the Master Chief Collection, on Graham's birthday, <laughs> uh, December 3rd. Uh, the game will also be available for individual purchase at $9.99, UK price, TBC. And the news came with a shiny trailer showing off those uh, all those high reg, high reg, high res Mjolnir textures. It's, it's like Mjolnir is in like Thor's hammer Mjolnir. Interesting. Uh, it's been a long road here for the Master Chief Collection, which launched years ago in an abject state. To 343's credit, the studio subsequently doubled down on supporting the game, and while progress has been slower than fans might like, it's been maintained and updated with some care. Reach arguably marks the completion of the project, and 343 should probably get ready for lots more pizza. Uh, there we go. That's the end of the article. Hmm. Um, a bit like you, I am not particularly qualified to talk about Halo. I, I did play one though. Uh, played. I mean, I didn't play one. I played a Halo game, which was three. Sorry, <laughs> confusing sentence. Um, yeah, I think fake that's, news. That's the one that um, was came out early days of Xbox 360. Was it? I'm not sure. Someone in the chat might be able to help me there. Because I remember getting my 360, and then I was like, "What are you supposed to get with an Xbox console? Uh, Halo, you know." So I just went and bought it, um, and I quite enjoyed it. But I'm also not like a massive fan of that genre anyway. So it was probably like a seven out of ten for me, maybe. Um, but I know other people love that kind of thing. I think maybe one and two are like the ones that. Like your hardcore fans really like Yeah, that. yeah. Uh, Bibby says, Great price! In capital letters. Uh, let's hope all the PC Master Chief Collection games are at that price as they are apparently being sold separately. Not paying 40 sheets per game for remastered old games, Nami. You got that wrong. As if 40 quid per game. Uh, anyone else in the chat? Have you guys played the Halo games? How do you guys feel about Reach being added to the collection and at around $9.99? Which naturally is going to translate to equal price of £9.99 because that's how currency yeah. conversion works in the games industry. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I have friends that absolutely love Halo. Um, and I know people that absolutely love Halo, even... Uh, this morning, Harry Channon, uh, who obviously did commentary for the Pez League uh, broadcast this season with us, Wonderboy, uh, as he's called, he was tweeting his love. I mean, I know he's a massive Halo guy, so it definitely has uh, stuff out there. Uh, stuff not out there. It definitely has elements of the game that, that massively appeal to people. Obviously, it's yeah. a first-person shooter kind of game, so naturally that works. But but beyond the art style, I've just... I've, just, I've not... Uh, see, I love a, I love a good... 
You like realistic, basically. That's, oh, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> I pause because I know it's absolutely clippable. <laughs> I love a good helmet. <laughs> uh, so like the likes of Iron Man's and Stormtroopers and things like that. So seeing Master Chief's helmet, and I remember seeing my first like Master Chief cosplayer at EGX like 2013 or something like that. Some yeah. dude that was kind of being walked around with two people on on his flanks because he's massive and he can't see feck all. And I'm thinking that helmet looks badass. I just just wish I liked the gameplay. And mm. and uh, it's pro- I'm I'm probably painting it with like like what's the opposite of rose tinted glasses. <laughs> uh, D- dark t- uh, no, I have no idea <laughs> gloomy t- <laughs> yeah t- crab glasses yeah. so I'm probably painting it with crab glasses uh, thinking back to when I'm going probably I'm probably playing it on a 360 console or something like that um, I know obviously it was Halo on the first Xbox uh, so I played one on, on, so. on the 360 and maybe I was playing one later on and one thing I'm not good with is, is playing old graphics games out of their time yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe I watched so, and when I say fluorescent green grass and purple rays I was kind of thinking of like it looks like the Riddler or something <laughs> like that uh, but maybe maybe I just played a game at a time maybe I'm being harsh in it and maybe I, I should play it a bit more I and mean, if I do play it a bit more then, then it gives us more reason for our listeners to go oh well, yeah exactly yeah. Is, is Halo Reach shit covered specs <laughs> is Halo Reach the latest Halo game then um, is there not being one since then I know that like there was one teased, wasn't there, just quite recently? I can't remember where that was, whether it was E3 or whatever. There was just like a little teaser trailer or something. But, um, yeah, otherwise, I feel like that if the Reach was the last Halo game, I feel like it was ages ago. So, I don't know. Pass, because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, one thing, though. Banjo Calrissian. Oh, oh no! Wait, this is what he's been thinking about for the last ten minutes. Sorry, sorry. I've been trying to get one out of Jar Jar Binks for ages. <laughs> so surely you can you can make music out of hitting different yeah, shit jars. Just, just so jar, just Jar Jar plink, dinks plink. Or, yeah, <laughs> Jar Jar Dinks. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Ah. Um, anyway. Uh, goodbye, Halo. Goodbye, Xbox. And hello, PlayStation, as we jump into our next piece of news. Multiplayer Survival Sim Rust is coming to PS4 next year. Uh, And this next studios that is making this game, I can't say it other than acting it out in person. (laughs) So... (laughs) Uh, that was me cracking my knuckles. Uh, yes, we'll probably have some sort of arthritis. Although I think that is a, uh, an unproven urban legend that cracking your knuckles leads to arthritis. Anyway, okay. anyway, Face Punch Studios uh, talks bringing its PvP title to console and the inspirations behind the game. This is by Natalie Wicks on the PlayStation blog. So Face Punch and Double Eleven have today announced that the hugely popular online survival game Rust will be released on PlayStation 4 next year. We found some time to speak to Face Punch Chief Gary Newman and pick his brain about Rust and what the announcement means for players. Hopefully I can play that without it Hmm. spitting the audio through. Uh, I'm going to mute it just to double up on that anyway. Um, Rust already has a huge following on PC. Why do you think players have connected with the game so much, is the question. Gary Newman's answer is, Rust is a harsh survival game, a dumb move, and you can lose hours, days, weeks, or progress. A smart... I, mean, I think that's off progress. Uh, a smart move, and you can advance your position on the island by weeks. It's a game of huge risks and huge rewards. When you start out, you're going to be the underdog. You have a rock, and everyone else seemingly has an AK. You need to work your way up. This isn't a linear path. You could find a fully loaded corpse and springboard from there. You could find a quiet part of the island to create a base and build up to that. Uh, You could get some friends and work together to rule the whole island. I think that is why it's so popular. Every time you die, you want revenge. You want to try a different strategy. Uh, I'll see if there's any interesting questions. What were your main inspirations? Players have been asking for a console release for a while now. Why did you make the decision to release Rust in 2020? We've been working on Rust on PC since 2013 in early access. While it was in early access, we felt we had a promise to fulfill for everyone that supported us. So PC was our main priority. We came out of early access in 2018. So at that point, we felt we could start looking at the console version. But at the same time, it isn't something we wanted to rush out. Uh, What are the key things you want to focus on? Uh, survival, naturally. <laughs> Great, <laughs> not good dying. answer. Not dying. <laughs> Part of the joy of Rust is finding our host in a regular map to play on. Will PlayStation uh, players be able to rent their own servers? Definitely. Nice. Support for us to allow players to take ownership and configure their servers to their own preferences. What are you most looking forward to uh, 
when Rust release next year. Rust spawns a lot of stories. Okay, we get where he's going with that one, so we don't need to uh, need to read the rest of that paragraph. But I am um, I'm fairly sure. If anyone in the chat can correct me or confirm, uh, this is a PlayStation uh, blog article that we've just obviously covered there. Uh, and I believe, uh, there we go, yeah, supplied by Dad and Lad Gaming. So thank you very much, Dad and Lad Gaming. Cheers for that. Oh. Apparently you sent it across at like four o'clock in the morning as well. <laughs> you absolute night owl. I hope uh, the little one's all well. But um, yeah, if anyone else can confirm, that was a PlayStation blog article. I'm pretty sure I saw an advert for Rust in XO19 as well. So it's not just coming to I PlayStation. I feel like I've just seen it. Like it's the image of the game is sort of like, Embedded, like, you know, it's been imprinted in my head recently. And I'm not quite sure why. Well, I've just seen like ads or something literally just earlier. Well, within that, like having never played Rust and not really seen much about it, apart from the meme stories of like one guy who's like, I'm, I'm a new spawn, I've got yeah, nothing, yeah, let yeah. me in, and he kills everyone and takes all their stuff. <laughs> I've seen that, those kind of meme stories, but that whatever that circular object was on the video that was playing on the screen, for those of you that aren't watching uh, the video uh, versions of this podcast, um, there was a circular object. It almost looked like the top of a telescope sort of uh like a hubble telescope building kind of thing um but fully circular anyway i saw that on the xbox xo19 yesterday i'm pretty sure i saw it but once again I, I was kind of like half watching it on my phone while doing other things so i wasn't really taking it in so if anyone could just double check is rust coming to playstation and xbox because it'd be good to know but have you ever played rust uh no i haven't and i didn't realize it was it had been around for so long in early access 2013 yeah i mean rust unfortunately for for me has the name it has because in 2013 rust for me was a map that you went on 1v1 someone else on call, call of duty modern warfare 2 if if sure. they thought they were the big things you get me 1v1 rust blood you get me uh, but, yeah. but yeah. So for, for years, when people spoke about Rust, I genuinely thought they were talking that. about Call of Duty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that awkward sort of moment where you, <laughs> as the conversation develops, and you kind of like, uh, no, that's not in card. No, that's not in card. And it's like, it's like, it's, I remember hearing conversations of someone getting an AK on, on Rust. Uh, killing someone and taking their stuff I'm thinking <laughs> that happens in every round <laughs> Why you t that is Modern Warfare Team Deathmatch what are you what are you saying and then silly me finds out later on that it's uh, it's a different game altogether yeah, not just a map <laughs> yeah um, sounds interesting actually that um because I'm, I'm sort of only really learning about it in that article I've heard little bits before but um, it's the first time I've really sort of looked you know, heard heard things about Rust, and I didn't realise that you could like lose weeks of progress, sort of thing, just by being killed after you know putting in the the weeks of obviously like getting better kit, I presume, and, and building your own little survival shelter and that kind of thing, and then it could all just be taken away from you. Like that. I I could see absolute bottom lip, like me playing Rust. I could I could see me going from like just having a bit of a stroll yeah. to guy with a a rock beats me to death that we're not even focusing and then just me sat there like <laughs> <laughs> like bottom lip hanging out absolute agony as, as I know yeah. that, that my shack that I've built my AKs and stuff that are all sat inside that I just didn't bring it because I came outside to, to mm. grow corn or whatever <laughs> I, I was sort of saying that you could do on it when we were speaking about it previously that would ruin me I think I think yeah, I, it's, it's like all the all the build up that you've put into it is probably nice at the time it's happening you probably enjoy it but is it really worth losing everything <laughs> afterwards I, I think know. I think playing it with other people probably works I just yeah. got back rust I put in three days exclamation mark exclamation mark gone in 12 minutes right there we are <laughs> however I've had some amazing times when I've logged on thrown a rock stolen AK-47 and taken over a base within seconds nice, nice. <laughs> so so let's say me and you were playing rust do you go in uh, go in as a duo or do you go in as two solos and then you can just just like just like not kill each other arrange to meet up and, and share um uh, the habitat on that server and then one day just go do you know what fuck you <laughs> uh, but what if then someone else comes in and goes do you know what fuck you and kills me and then alistair kills him can i then respawn in and loot my loot uh, uh, yeah i'm not sure uh, every Rust interaction ever. Yay, we live together. <laughs> Yay, you are now dead. <laughs> it's the thrill of taking out six people to rob their shit, risk reward. Yeah, see, I I like the idea of that survival bit because that's, that is my 
uh, enjoyment in PUBG, the time to kill in PUBG, ding, 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 is so low compared to the Apexes and the uh, the Blackouts. Obviously, there's Modern Warfare now I've not played, so I can't say. But you can just go dead straight away. Yeah. One shot could kill you. Um, and I love that because it's much harder to get a full kit. It's much harder to get kitted out. Obviously, it's not like the, the levels of survival games where you can tweak your sights and you can craft your own bits. And But I do like the idea that it means something. If you die, you have invested mm. time. Uh, and that, that amount of effort that you've put into it, you lose that, that makes it mean something. So if I had safety nets in mm. in i mean playing 30 minutes in pubg is is, is, is it's a shit amount of time to lose right at the end final circle but it's, yeah. part, it's part of puzzle. Exactly. three to three days what, what alistair said three days and losing that in, in a few minutes i'd be like yeah i'm just gonna turn it off there's not i'm not wasting I, my time exactly it, it it's that wanting to try again sort of mentality um you get that when you finished a game of pubg or fortnite or whatever you know, you you kind of think, oh, maybe next time, maybe next time, sort of thing. Do you get that sense of, oh, well, just one more try <laughs> when you've when you've died after three days of building it up? Yeah, it's, it's, and the fact that there is no end game in it, obviously, that does alienate quite a lot of people. Mm. A lot of people like narrative, and that's the reason why Battle Royale has been so successful compared to survival games in terms of breaking into the mainstream, because you have resolution in the narrative. You are a guy with nothing. You start at nothing and you work your way to the top. Yeah. That that yeah. sort of like progression story. Whereas in Rust, it's you start at nothing and work your way to the top until eventually someone kills you and you go back down to the bottom yeah. and start again. And it's just like, there is no end to the narrative. It's a, it's a circle. Yeah. Or, or just a linear narrative that never stops if you if you never finish it and you just turn it off kind of thing. It's a game I enjoy playing so much. Uh, know, knowing it will never account for anything, it's just fun. Uh, I think some people uh, don't play games for fun these days. They have to be the best, or there has to be a winner. Rust has no winners, and that's why I love it. Which is which is nice to hear. Like I said, uh, that isn't the general consensus in the mainstream, but it's I mean that it's clearly a big consensus. And have, yeah. playing games to have fun, uh, and that's kind of I suppose that that's kind of part of the reason why some people will play team death matches because whilst you do get winners after 15 minutes your team won your team won your team won I will play team deathmatch and it's not I don't care about whether we win as such it's, it's about the moves and, and moving together as a team and getting that cool headshot yeah. and things like that because after 50 games of team deathmatch you don't give a toss how many games you've won nobody really yeah. cares that it's, yeah. it, the only stat that I kind of even focus on is my own KD but that doesn't matter if we're not playing as a team because I'll get exactly. loads of kills, but all my team are just getting wiped out. It's like, yeah. oh, great. Um, I've slept with every Rush player's mum too. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's your mum? Uh, uh, the saltiest game in the world. So if if we played together, Alistair, and we were in the same server, if we'd built our shit up over three days and then someone comes along and fecks me up but not you, can I come back into the same game? And if if I do, can I pick up all my shit and go from there i mean obviously if we both get wiped out then it's a bit difficult or if if we do both get wiped out will our fortified base and all our ammo and stuff obviously now occupied some by someone else but will that still be there how does that work because that's that's the bit that kind of interests me if if, if you can go back in and, and attack uh your own like where you've previously been obviously with pebbles because you're just a man in a diaper kind of thing does it work that way Cause... yeah i'm interested to know and also is there any kind of like leveling system or anything that just that is sort of inherent to your character just so you keep hold of at least something so, like yeah. you know maybe I'd, I'd, i wouldn't mind like losing my kit as much if I at least got a bit of experience along the way that just allowed an ability to be unlocked that oh, made yeah. it getting it back easier see i'm i'm kind of torn on that sort of stuff i like battle royale without any leveling sure yeah because the you could be playing against someone that's been playing for months and yeah. I'm, I've been playing for two days so I've got used to the controls but I'm not an expert but knowing that we both stand on the level playing field yeah, means that enough. it just makes it a bit more Yeah, it would, I think in, in uh, my sort of structure of skills or experience or whatever you you would have to sort of change whole structures of the game to work with that it would be a bit like in a you see the way like a lot of online sort of World of Warcraft style games work is that you have different areas, different levels. So I suppose then you'd have to think about all that kind of stuff, which almost makes the leveling then pointless <laughs> because you're still all in a level playing field. So it's it's one of them. I was uh, not talking. I was listening to you then. The reason I wasn't looking at you is because I was just seeing what this video is before we actually watch it on stream. I'll give it. I'll some time to respond to the comment. He might have done it already. Uh, but what 
I will do is we're just about finished here. We, we, we'll wrap up with um, a little bit more on Rust if Alistair jumps back on the comment, if he hasn't already. However, one thing I do want to show you in the chat is we're talking about games being fixed and broken and so on. This, this is just a little bit of something to end on. We've been speaking about shotguns and guns and tweaks and games and things like that, particularly Modern Warfare. Uh, Dad and Lad, obviously, he's been playing a lot of Modern Warfare. Shotgun over sniper any day. Look at this. this. So this, as you can see at the front of the screen, is a shotgun being loaded there, double barrel. That over there, I assume, is a silo in the distance. There's a dude on top of that miles away. This is why shotguns absolutely 100% need to be nerfed in Call of Duty because this is ridiculous. Reload, reload, pop, pop, and then boom, boom, long shot, head shot. No one, no one ever would take that shot. I mean, if you had it like a... A, a, like a, a metal slug, I think it's I think it's called a full metal jacket slug or whatever. I don't know what it is. Whatever. If you have, uh, you can get shotguns that will just fire one solid projectile rather than scatter guns. But, but my God, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous, mate. Uh, no one should be taking a shot from there with a shotgun. shotgun at all. Exactly. It's not the point of shotguns in games, right? Well, in real life, like, well, you know, you don't uh, do that with shotguns. Uh, yes, you respawn in the sleeping bag and you either run away and start again or head to their base to head off. Uh, your gear as they transfer it from theirs to yours or go find others on the server to help get your base back no leveling system at all the only thing you can keep is the blueprints that you can build but you forget them every month and have to do them again <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember how i built this house <laughs> uh, it's, it's literally well. just four walls mate i can't remember how i did this what did i do yeah it's literally just four walls. how are the walls <laughs> how many walls four walls there are walls but four walls <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, interesting. How much is Rust? How much is Rust? Is it free to play, or is it is it a purchase game? Because that's probably one that I will add to my list of games that I will never play. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, Tarkov, which I don't have. Uh, just like uh, Cuisine Royale and all the rest that I have downloaded and installed, but I've still never played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, no, it's about fifteen pounds, but initially, uh, but usually in the Steam, uh, Steam sale, about six pounds. So, well, I keep Sorry. my eyes out for it because it does sound interesting. Does. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, that has been another week of the scoop from myself and Mr. Jerome. Yeah, I've definitely done all week. I'm putting a, a, a proper shift there. Yeah, good lad. Uh, the fact that. And even if you didn't, you were here to see it over the line, exactly. and that's that's the level of commitment that, yeah. that we're kind of <laughs> kind of here for. Nice one, Lee. GG. Cheers. Yeah, nice. If only other people had the same level of commitment. Precise, precise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, babe. So. Uh, anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the scoop for today. Uh, thank you for joining us live in the chat. Thank you for the uh, for the subscriptions that have been dropped in the chat as well. Absolutely appreciate the support from. Danny Day, we've got the Pino, BK Connor, yeah. much love, much love, much love. Uh, feel free to check if you have a Twitch Prime sub, if you have a Twitch Prime. Uh, and what is Twitch Prime, I hear you say? Well, exclamation mark Prime in the chat might do something. It also might not, because I don't know if chatbot's on. If it does, <laughs> it'll tell you a little bit more about how. If you have uh, Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch account. Oh, there we go. There you go, it does work. Amazon Prime allows you to become a member of the Ice Cream Team for free. You can resubscribe every month too. Find out more about Twitch Prime there. Use the link. So if you do have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription. You can use it on the channel. You get used to our, uh, you get access to our emotes and your own little sub badge in the chat. Do it if you want to do it, just like Danny Day eighty three did earlier on before we went live. Make sure you check it out. Obviously, if you can't do that, you don't have to. But please feel free to hit the follow button because that way you will get a notification when we go live on Monday at 10 a.m. with the next installment of The Scoop on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Don't worry if you can't be there. We know it's in the working day. People work. We understand. But you can watch the video about youtube.com forward slash ice cream uploads. It will be there about an hour-ish after the show finishes. And we know that not everyone has time to watch a video. I mean, I mean, people have got busy lives. They're on, they're on the move. What they can often do, though, is listen to music on the headphones or in the car or whatever. And that is why we upload the scoop to four podcast services for you. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So make sure you listen. Get us all up in your ears, yo. It's almost too much choice, Graham. I know. It's like, it's like, it's like there is no reason that people just aren't listening exactly. to this. Maybe because the banter is mediocre. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, we kind of will let you have the free pass then. But if not, uh, like systemically, there is services that can provide you all of the scoopy goodness that you need in your life. So that is week five in the bag. For everyone that's been here uh, 
throughout the journey absolutely appreciate the sport. A lot more views, lots more comments, and it's growing day in, day out. Please feel free to tell other people as well. Bring your friends. That's, that's what it's all about. It's all about the growth. Um, more opinions uh, gives us more insight, and more insight leads to better discussions, and that's what we want on the scoop. Plans for the weekend, Luke? Um, well, I'm actually going to take advantage of that £1 um, Game Pass thing on PC. Um, so, yeah, going to play a bit of Age of Empires Definitive Edition, I think, uh, among other games as well. I will check them all out. I recently got a new graphics card as well on my PC, so I want to try and get more games that will show them off. So Age of Empires 2, which is like a 20-year-old game <laughs> uh, being redone, will be perfect. Yay! Old <laughs> games! <laughs> but, yeah, uh, what about you? I will be travelling to the Trafford Centre. Uh, I'm best awesome. manning for my cousin's wedding next year, so we're going to go look at some suits. And then other than that, no doubt I will play some ding, 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 PUBG. Uh, and depending on how things go, timings-wise, maybe something else. But as I mentioned, my better half is not feeling very well, so maybe we just get some dirty foods and, and slob around for a bit she instead. Gets soon. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful weekend as we go back to the front cam, so you can see the whole studio setup. Ah, there we go. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a lovely week again here on Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads, and it will be an even lovelier next week. Do you know why? Because you guys are going to be there too. So make sure you come back 10 a.m. Monday morning, Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads or YouTube or the podcast services. And uh, until then, we will see you then from myself and from Luke. Stay frosty.